My lord and my god, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon for my sins, and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. According to a UK travel company, yesterday was Blue Monday. They say it is the most depressing day of the year, according to their own secret algorithm. <laughs> well, I don't know if you had a Blue Monday or a whole Blue Week or a whole Blue Year. But regardless of the color of the day, it is true that after the Christmas holidays, everything seems a bit of an uphill struggle. And maybe to lift our spirits, today we read in the Mass the beginning of the story of David. You, Lord, asked Samuel to go to Bethlehem to the house of Jesse and anoint one of his children. Now, he had eight children, and Samuel made the usual mistake of trying to guess which one you, Lord, had chosen. He saw the eldest boy, Eliab, strong, tall, handsome, and thought, surely he is the one. <laughs> But you, Lord, told him, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. God does not see as man sees. Because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. Something we read also in the Gospel of St. John, that you, Jesus, knew what was in the hearts of men. Well, seven of Jesus' children came, and you, Lord, didn't choose any of them. Now, I'm also the seventh child in a large family, and I love this Bible text. <laughs> For we, the little ones of large families, we always feel like we are the last for everything. <laughs> anyway, Samuel asked Jesse to call the little one of the family. And when David appeared, Samuel saw that he wasn't strong or tall like his older brothers. We read that he was glowing with health, with beautiful eyes, good-looking, an impressive boy. It is a beautiful beginning to a promising story. A handsome little shepherd loved by God and chosen to be a king. It is a beautiful story, and it is not just David's story. It is also your story and mine. You see, you, Lord, love me as much as you loved David. You know my heart. You made it. And you see in me, as you saw in David, not the little thing that I am, but the great saint that I can become. For when we think about young David, we see the great potential that he had, chosen and loved by God. That little shepherd had everything it took to become the mightiest king of his times, a lover of God and a prophet and the writer of beautiful psalms. Of him, you, Lord, would say, I found David, a man after my own heart. Well, he had everything. You, Lord, defended him from the persecution of Saul. You established him as king, fought alongside his army, and David ended up ruling over a great land. And he also loved you, Lord, and decided he wanted to build a great temple for you. He really had a great heart. So you, Lord, promised him an everlasting kingdom. You made a covenant with him. The Messiah would be called Son of David. It was all developing as the beautiful story it was meant to be. Until Well, until something went wrong, you remember. One terrible day, David became an adulterer and a murderer. He started 
accumulate incense. On another day, he disobeyed the Lord by ordering a census. Well, that didn't please you, Lord. That beautiful story had been spoiled. A man after your own heart had now become one more great sinner. So what happened next? Well, we wouldn't be surprised if you, Lord, had decided to call off your pact. After all, would you, Lord, want to be the descendant of an adulterer and a murderer? We wouldn't be surprised if you, Lord, had terminated his kinship there and then and appointed someone else to lead your people. We wouldn't be surprised if David had ended up forsaken, abandoned by everyone, and punished for his sins with leprosy or something like that. But that's not what we read. The fact is, and this is the content of our prayer now, the fact is that in your eyes, in your sight, Lord, David was still that lovely kid that you loved so much. Because you, Lord, don't change your mind. Let's dwell on this today in our prayer. You, Lord, saw in David not what he was, but what he was destined to become. What you saw was your project, your great expectations of that little good-looking shepherd after your own heart. You, Lord, never stop loving your children, no matter what they have done against you. You know our hearts. You made them. You know how much they can love. And you see in us, not the little thing that we are, but the great saints that we can become. Regardless of my sins and miseries, you see in me a heart you made for yourself. A heart that can love so much. And no sin, no mistake, no misery can ever impede my heart from loving as much as you, Lord, made it capable of loving. You, who now pray with me, you and I, like David, have a very promising life ahead. God has great expectations of you and me. We are destined for greatness, for love, for eternal happiness. We are loved by God, and there is nothing, nothing that can change that. As St. John Paul II said, We are not the sum of our weaknesses and failures. We are the sum of the Father's love for us and our real capacity to become the image of his Son, Jesus. So, whatever happens in my life, whatever I do, beyond any fear, any doubt, any misery, Every time you, Lord, stare at me, you have that tender look of a father who sees not what I am, but what I can become. You see something more beautiful, more extraordinary, more amazing than I can even imagine. You see the promise of every hope, every dream, every wish, every capability, every expectation you have of me. You, Lord, see your project. That's what St. Catherine of Siena meant when she said, Be who God meant you to be, and you will set the world on fire. Nothing can change God's perception of me. Whatever I do, you, Jesus, don't throw in the towel. You don't lower your expectations of me. Understand this. The real Goliath of David wasn't the giant that could be killed with a stone. The real Goliath was the discouragement when he saw his sins and miseries. But he didn't give up. And that's why he was according to God's heart. Mary, my mother immaculate, you also see your children with the eyes of an affectionate mother. 
helped me to become, with the help of St. Joseph, the child that God planned me to be. To never give up meeting his expectations. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.